do a swim run, but you have no idea what equipment to get and why. So we're going to get you from here to here. part swim run gear video. Um, part one we talked about wetsuits and in this particular part we're going to talk about all the other accessories that goes along with the wetsuit. So I'll just throw up a wetsuit here just for demonstration purposes. So underneath your wetsuit a lot of folks will wear some type of a short. So we're going to wear some type of a tri-suit or some type of a compression short or something um, just to kind of give us an additional layer of warmth. Some folks will go completely nude under here. Some folks will want to wear these. Uh, it does give you an additional layer against the cold, especially if you're doing a cold suit or a cold uh, race. And then some folks will also wear some kind of a top, um, such as a tri top or, or they do have some swim run specific tops or some type of a compression top. Again, it's just an extra layer. Uh, if, if it's a hotter race, you may want one go with anything so that you can open up your suit and get the full uh, um, full air flow going across your body, but some folks will wear these in some of the colder and then They'll if it's a really 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 cold race You'll you may see something like this, which is a base layer that goes underneath the wetsuit um, It's a, a thin compression shirt. Some of them are thicker like this one. This one's kind of a small uh, thin neoprene this would be for a really, really cold race, or you'll see a compression shirt that um, is a lot thinner than this that you may, you may wear underneath it. So those are options, both options to kind of give you an additional layer of warmth um, and chafing, anti-chafing uh, underneath the suit. So that's kind of, kind of what you would see underneath the suit. And then in a, on top of the suit, um, we're typically going to have some type of a flotation device, such as a swim buoy. This is the swim buoy that I used for years and years. So I created this swim buoy prior to doing Rockman, which was my first swim run race, and then Otillo. Um, this one is something that I created. This is the funny thing. I've seen a couple of videos out there of how to make a swim run buoy, and they get real fancy with them. They create these, uh, you know, they drill holes, and they put these little grommets in it, and they glue the grommets in so they don't move, and then they put the... Uh, the the um, elastic through the little grommets and you get them tight. I literally, on the way to the aquatic center to do my first swim run session, um, my buddy Dan says, uh, you know, suggest that we probably tie these buoys off onto our legs like they do um, at the races. He had already done Otillo before, and so I hadn't done it. Typical me doing waiting things, waiting for things at the last minute. When I got to the aquatic center. I realized I still hadn't put this thing together. So I flipped down a tailgate in my truck, threw this on the truck, grabbed my pocket knife, I jabbed two holes in it, and I took a bike tube and took a ballpoint pen and pushed the bike tube through, tied it into a knot, and it's been that way. Nothing fancy, nothing expensive. You didn't have to go to the hardware store, didn't have to buy grommets, didn't have to do that. And you can see that it's, and this is something else that I've been, just been trying lately, just a different way of tying off the buoy. Um, but you can see that this thing has lasted me. We're talking, I've raced with this. Um, I've done Rockman, Otillo, Swim Run Virginia twice, Swim Run NC twice, um, Casco Bay, and Swim Run Catawba. And this buoy has been through all those races and it's been through all the training uh, for all those races. So pool time, um, time doing bricks out in the woods, all that. And you can see it's got quite a few little scars on it. It's got quite a few little jags on it. This thing has been through the ringer. So this is what I've used for three years. It's not anything fancy. Now, with that said, <coughs> I've upgraded to one of these. If you don't want to make it yourself, there are several uh, uh, places out there that you can buy. I've got all kinds of fuzz all over it. Um, there's several places that you can buy uh, pre-made swim run buoys and this is one of them uh, obviously this one's from by orca and it's already got the straps on it already pre-made they're adjustable so uh, you know that's probably you know pretty close facsimile to that um, it is a little bit taller so if you look at it from that angle it is a little bit taller 
although this one is a little bit thicker. So volume wise, I think you're probably getting about the same volume and they're about the same weight. Um, so it's a, a pretty, pretty nice buoy. And this is what I'll be racing with uh, this year. So that's your swim run buoy. Now, with that said, let's put those aside. One of the controversial things is paddles. So we've had, and I've had a numerous people when they first find out about swim run, they'll see pictures or they'll see uh, different different um, um, videos out there. And they go, "What's dude? What's with the paddles and the buoy? This, you, this uh, that's kind of cheating, isn't it?" It's like, no, this is not triathlon. This is swim run. And one of the rules of swim run is you can take any gear that you want to take with you as long as you carry it with you for the the, the duration of the race. The only um, stipulation or or exception to that rule is there's a maximum um, size when it comes to your your flotation so there are some limits to the flotation but outside of that if you want to use it you can use it you just have to carry it with you the entire time so we have paddles uh, for the years and years i've used these stroke makers and stroke makers are probably the most inexpensive paddle on the market it's the most basic paddle on the market there's nothing fancy about it it's not curved it's not um, it's not uh, um, shape of your hand. It's not anything fancy like every. It seems like everybody and their brother out there has tried to reinvent the paddle, kind of like reinventing the wheel. But these are, are what I have raced with, and they're also what I have trained with. Now, I've gone back and forth whether I use the yellow or whether I use the red. Um, it depend, I think it kind of depends on the race, kind of depends on the water conditions, how wavy it is, how much. Um, uh, how much current is there? Is it in the river? Is it in the ocean? And so that's why I'll kind of decide one way or the other. And these have been through, you know, again, they've kind of been through the ringer. So if you look, you can kind of see all the different scars and um, scratches and scrapes and whatnot from all the rocks. Um, but those are the, the paddles that I've raced with so far. I do have a set of these that I'm going to be racing with this year. Um, they're about the same size as the red stroke makers. They're a little bit bigger than the yellows. Um, and there's a couple reasons why I do like these paddles. Now you notice they're, again, they, they're, they're a little bit of a different shape, but they're not, they're not like they tried to reinvent the wheel. They did improve upon it, but they didn't try to reinvent it. One thing that they, they did, they kept, they're, they're still flat, you know, they're still, they're a little bit thicker. Um, but one thing that they did a little bit differently, which I kind of like, is there is a um, kind of a depression right here that goes underneath your palm. And, you know, it definitely helps from a fatigue standpoint because your hand isn't being pushed flat all the time whenever you're pulling. It actually rests kind of real nicely on that. Um, and it also gives you kind of a place to put your thumb up against that when you're pulling. You feel like you're kind of grabbing it a little bit more. The other thing is, is that if you look at the straps on here, it's a hollow tube. And that hollow tube means that they are very, very thin. And if you look at this one, I end up tying this one off in a knot because I, I broke it. And it was too short to go all the way through and back through like I had before. So I end up having to tie it into a knot. The beauty of these guys is they are solid. So they're, it's a solid piece of rubber. So a little bit uh, more durable than the ones that come on the stroke makers. So those are the gonna be the racing paddles this year. So you got the swim buoy, got your paddles. That's the two most basic pieces of equipment that the bulk of the swim runners, the successful swim runners will use is these two pieces of equipment. Uh, obviously you have a swim cap that is gonna be provided by the, the race itself. Um, you'll notice that they're usually a little bit thicker because the water's a little bit colder. Uh, it, it, you don't have to worry about providing your own cap. In some of the really, really cold races, you may want to take a, a neoprene cap to wear underneath this, uh, just to kind of give you some additional warmth. Again, it really depends on the temperature of the water. I'll see folks wearing these sometimes and some folks not um, in the same race. So it really depends on a personal preference. So a neoprene cap over your head will give you some additional warmth. If you're in really, really cold water for long distances, uh, and it really isn't the distance that makes the difference, it's the time. So if you're in really, really cold water for a long duration of time, you might want to consider one of those. So this will be provided by the race. Um, this is going to be provided by you. Uh, goggles, you'll all, you'll always, um, where are my goggles? Oh, they're inside my bag. 
Where's my bag? There it is. So goggles. I've got two different sets of goggles that I like to use. I have a clear pair, which in, in cloudy conditions, you know, that's going to give me the most visibility. Um, so I'll, I'll wear that clear pair during the, those conditions. And then in some of the brighter conditions, I've got a pair of tinted goggles that I like to use. Um, and those tinted goggles will, will protect me from um, the glare and whatnot, will also kind of enhance some of my visibility. So those are the two types of goggles I like to use. And then you'll also see um, some folks wearing some form of compression sleeves on their calves or calf sleeves as they're commonly referred to. Uh, this is uh, twofold. Some of them are, are provide a little bit of flotation, although I, I don't really see a huge benefit in having flotation on your lower extremities. Um, I think the flotation benefit comes at bringing your hips up, not your, not your feet. So the calf sleeves will serve two different purposes. In addition to the flotation, the second purpose is, is to kind of give you some of that compression and help with the endurance of your running. So, in, and then lastly, you know, a third one would be to give you a little bit of additional warmth since it's covering your legs. Again, something to consider there. Shoes, your shoe choice should be something that is, um, that drains well, uh, that also has some type of a cleat on the bottom because the bulk of the swim run races are in the woods or in a uh, single track trail or gravel roads or even trail less terrain where you're just um, bushwhacking through the woods following little pieces of tape. <laughs> so um, you want something that's going to drain well because you're going to be swimming in these typically. Even if you tuck them into your wetsuit or try to deal with your shoes, they're going to get wet. So when you put them on uh, running or when you get out of the water from swimming and you take off running, you're going to want them to drain well. So pick something that has a nice mesh upper to it. Uh, stay away from Gore-Tex because Gore-Tex is good at keeping water out from you know, hitting this. Once water gets in, they're a really good bowl. So they hold water just as well as they repel it. So um, get something that, that's, gonna, that's gonna drain pretty well. Uh, I like to stretch laces because as my feet swell, uh, they're gonna, it's gonna stretch a little bit as opposed to me having something tied off in knots. So pick those. I, I would not recommend regular road running shoes uh, or triathlon shoes if you're used to running on those because I don't think that you're gonna find that on some of the rocks and some of the, the trailless terrain, you're not gonna get the traction that you want. Um, unless it's a race that has lots of flat road running uh, or hard, hard pack trail. A good example of that is probably Swim Run Virginia, uh, as there's a lot of that race that's, that is on very hard packed trail or gravel road or paved road. So having a, a shoe that will both drain well and run in those conditions is probably a little bit better. I've got another pair of shoes that don't have cleats like this that I think runs a little bit better on the road that I like to use in that race. I don't have those handy or I'd show them to you. Okay. Okay gang, we have the portal studio set up in the hotel here, traveling for work. And long story short, I had a GoPro camera stolen and the content that I had originally for this video uh, was on that camera, never did get it downloaded. So I took some bits and pieces from a previous recording that I had done for this and along with this one, we're gonna put one video together. It's gonna look a little bits and pieces put bunched together, but you'll get the content that you're looking for. Um, as you can see, we've got the portable studio set up in the hotel room. All right, so that's, I'll put that at the beginning. Now, another tool that you'll see uh, teams using is a lanyard or a tether. Uh, it's commonly referred to as a tether. This is used to tow your partner. So as a two-man team, what you'll end up doing is, is that, uh, it, I think it kind of started off, I'm not quite sure how it started off actually, but what it's used for is two things. One, 
if your teammate is a little bit faster than you or a little bit slower than you, then you can use this tether. And you can see it's got hooks on one end, hooks on another, and it's stretchy. Okay. The idea is that um, one, one teammate is hooked on one end, one teammate is hooked on the other end. The faster person pulls the slower person. Now, that might seem a little bit kind of um, a little harsh, but it's not as bad as it sounds um, for two reasons. One, it's stretchy, so it's not like it's a hard yank every time this thing gets tight and gets loose. It's stretched, so it's a smooth kind of a pull. And the other thing is, think about it like a tandem bicycle. You've got two people on a tandem bike. One person in the front's pedaling, one person in the back's pedaling, so both together you're going faster. So in this concept, the lead swimmer is pulling the slower swimmer. The slower swimmer is you getting to stay in the draft, either in behind or off to one side. You kind of figure out which way you want to do that. There's a video or an article on World of Swim Run uh, about the, the aspects of drafting. But you can use this tether to pull the slower person. Now, that may sound like a great idea for on the swim, but it's also a great idea on the run if you've got one person that's faster than the other. That's a little bit more challenging. Dan and I actually tried uh, at Casco Bay, we were tethered the entire race. And at one point, uh, he's run along the rocks, along one of the, the islands where we're going from rock to rock to rock, and I caught my toe on a rock, and next thing I know, I'm being like dragged across the rock. So that takes a little bit more practice. Uh, I, most of the teams that I see will use this in the swim uh, in order to uh, pull the slower swimmer. The second reason that it comes in handy, just not from just a, a speed standpoint, even if you are equal swimmers or equal runners, is in a lot of the races, the swimming is the first leg. Uh, so you may have a short swim or short run to the swim, then you get off in the water and everybody looks the same. You're all wearing typically a very similar bib, a very similar swim cap, you're all in wetsuits. And so it's very difficult to discern one person from the other. So as you're all going into the swim, you still have the rule that you have to stay together within 10 meters. Um, and this is a good way to keep track of where your teammate is. So uh, when you're in that first swim, you can use this to kind of stay together instead of getting lost and getting split apart. And next thing you know, you can't find your partner. So that's this is a great, uh, uh, great tool. It's definitely something you have to practice. This is not one of those things that you can wait until race day to try out. Uh, this is something that you want to practice and unfortunately you can't practice it very well in a pool so get out into some open water swims and practice this with your teammate this particular tether was purchased uh, by uh, from orca as you can see it's already pre-made it's already got the hooks in it it's all set up so it won't uh, it won't fray and it came along with this belt which will segue me into how do you hook this to each other um, i've seen a couple of different teams do a couple of different things and we've even tried a couple of different things um, one thing is, is that there are a couple of wetsuits, like the head swim run suit uh, has loops, or at least the ones that we had. I don't know if the ones that, that they have out now have it, but there's a loop in the front and the back of the suit, the bottom of the zippers. You just hook into the loop or have a carabiner already in the loop and you hook into the carabiner is what we did. Or uh, I've also seen teams that will wrap it around their waist and hook into each other. So you have, in essence, kind of a, 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 a drawstring. Um, but most folks are using uh, a belt of some sort. Now, along with this tether from Orca, uh, it came with this belt. I think I've got, do I have this thing? There. All right. So this is the belt that came from Orca. It's got a buckle on the front. You can adjust it on the side. There is a, a link or loop that will move along the belt. And then there's one that is fixed. As you can see, it's sewn in. Uh, and the idea is that one that's sewn in, if you have your buckle in the front, the one that's sewn in stays to one side and you could probably have a clip of some sort that you can hook equipment onto, paddles, whatever, goggles. And then this one here can move around so that you can hook your lanyard into it or your, um, your tether and it will move back and forth as you go from side to behind or however you'd like it. So that's one type of belt. Uh, Dan and I had uh, um, a couple of belts made for us from our friends at Orange Bud. Uh, same kind of, similar kind of concept. Um, if you guys want Orange Bud to make these, uh, let them know. I'm sure they'll manufacture them and maybe sell them. But uh, Orange Bud makes all kinds of um, uh, hydration packs and bags and all kinds of cool gear, gear 
typically towards running or biking. So we've got some mountain bike uh, packs that they make as well. Um, and since they've got all the equipment and they, they make straps and stuff for the packs and whatnot, I reached out to them and said, hey, can you guys make us a, a Sun Run belt? So it has a little bit of a, a bigger clip to it, has a safety whistle built into it. Um, and then we've got a couple other things as far as loops to, to hook into and it's adjustable as well. So this is what we use. And before we got this particular tether, we had just went to uh, the hardware store and bought some of this stretchy cord. Um, I think we may have gotten this one at Home Depot. Uh, I think someone said they looked at Lowe's and Lowe's didn't have it. Boo, Lowe's. Um, but this is just, as you can see, all we did was we cut it to a specific length and we tied a couple of knots in the end. I've played with a couple of different carabiner types, um, but that's typically what we have. Now our length is about six or seven feet long. And the reason it's about six or seven feet long is because we're trying to stay in the draft behind one another as opposed to off to the side. So that's the length that we chose. And that's your, that's your tether. All right, so that in essence is the gear that most people will use. I've seen uh, a couple of teams also use fins, uh, and but the, the challenge I think that I also saw those teams have is they had to deal with those fins when they're out of the water. So if they added transition time by having to take them off and put their shoes on, or take their shoes off and put their fins on, so at the water's edge, they've got transition time they've added to their race. But they've also have to contend with what do I do with these fins? And I've seen them tucked into like straps around their waist, and I've seen them hanging off of people's backs um, from a, you know, a carabiner or something off their around their neck. I've seen a couple of different things. I think personally, my opinion, for what little bit it's worth, I think the amount of time that you gain in the in the swim is completely negated with the transition time that that is added. So I don't think that the, that fins is a very good idea. That's why we don't use them. All right, so that's pretty much it when it comes to swim run gear. Hopefully I've kind of explained why you would use some of these things. Additional pull, additional flotation. I explained the suit in the previous, um, um, the previous video. So if you've got any questions, hit up my Facebook page, hit up my Twitter link, hit up YouTube, hit up Instagram, or go to speedlizard.com. One of those ways you can get a hold of me and I look forward to having any and all your questions. See you in the water.